It's a roadmap. The MLO roadmap for beginners. Yeah, that's the one. It's supposed to lay it all out, help anyone get started in AI. You know, yeah, it's really exciting stuff. I feel like we're at this point where it's changing everything. It is. So I think it's really cool to unpack exactly what's in this roadmap. So what's the first step here? Well, the roadmap starts with understanding the basics. Okay, the basics. What does that even mean? Is that like AI 101? Basically. So uh, before you can dive in and start building anything cool, you're going to need the right tools. Okay. And for AI, the essential tools are math and Python programming. Math. Hmm. Yeah. Do we have to? I mean, it's kind of important. Math is really the foundation of AI. So all those algorithms you hear about, they're built on concepts from linear algebra. Oh, okay. Probability, statistics, and even calculus. Oh, gosh. Calculus. I haven't touched that since high school. But don't worry. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. You know, think of it this way. Linear algebra helps AI, like, see things. Okay. Probability helps it make decisions. Statistics helps it learn from data. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So any tips on how to, like, brush up on these math concepts? Yeah, definitely. Khan Academy is a fantastic resource for, like, breaking down complex topics. Oh, yeah. Into uh, more digestible pieces. Yeah. And if you want a more visual learning style, there's a YouTube channel called Three Blue, One Brown. Oh, I heard of that. Yeah. They do a really amazing job explaining those concepts more intuitively. That's a great point. I am a visual learner for sure. So we've got math down. What about Python? What is it and why is it important? So Python is kind of like the Swiss army knife of programming languages, okay. especially in AI and ML. It's pretty easy to learn. And there's this massive ecosystem of libraries. Libraries. What do you mean by libraries? So they're basically um, collections of pre-written code that are specifically designed for AI tasks. Like mm. one of the big ones is called Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn. Yeah. Okay. That one's built on Python. And it gives you all the tools you need to build, like, you know, basic prediction models, all the way up to complex neural networks. So Python is like the language, and these libraries are like dictionaries or something. Yeah, that's a great analogy. They're kind of like specialized dictionaries for AI. Right. Yeah. And for learning Python, there are a ton of free resources out there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, like websites like Free Code Camp and Code Academy. Mm -hmm. Those offer these interactive courses that can take you from, like, zero to coding really quickly. Wow, okay, so we've got math, we've got Python, mm -hmm. and we're starting to learn how to like talk to AI. Yeah. But what about the data itself? Where does that come in? The roadmap mentions data handling. What's that all about? Yeah, so data handling is super important because AI and ML are all about the data. It's basically the fuel that powers these intelligent systems. Mm. So think of data handling as like uh, preparing that fuel, getting it ready for your AI engine. Okay, so are we talking about like I don't know, organizing files and spreadsheets. Like, what exactly are we doing here? It's more than just that. The, those things are part of it. Okay. Think of it like having this giant box of Legos, you know? Okay, yeah. All jumbled up. So to build anything amazing, you have to sort those bricks, you know? Clean yeah. them up. Yeah. Figure out how they fit together. So data handling is kind of like that, but instead of Legos, it's information. I'm with you. Yeah. So what are the actual steps to do that? Well, first you need to clean the data. Clean it get rid of inconsistencies or any errors. Okay. Then you want to visualize it so you can understand the patterns and relationships within the data. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And finally, you manipulate it to get it into the right format for your AI models. Okay, that sounds pretty hands-on. Are there any specific tools that people use for this? Yeah, you'll actually be using Python again, but this time with libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. NumPy, Pandas. Okay, and what do those do? So NumPy helps you crunch numbers really efficiently. Oh, okay. Pandas helps you organize and manipulate the data. Mm. And then Matplotlib helps you create all the charts and graphs to visualize the data. So NumPy is the calculator. Yeah. Pandas is like my spreadsheet person. Mm -hmm. And Matplotlib is like the chart maker. Exactly. And they all work together seamlessly within Python to help you make sense of the data. Got it. And uh, one more essential skill for data handling is SQL. SQL. Okay. That's a new one. Yeah. So that's the language that you use to talk to databases, which is where all this valuable information is stored. Okay. Databases. So is that something I need to worry about at this point? You know, it might sound intimidating, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Learning SQL is kind of like getting a backstage pass to access massive amounts of data. Okay. Yeah. It helps you retrieve the specific information that you need for your AI projects. Imagine like building an app that recommends movies. 
So SQL would let you tap into a movie database. Oh, okay, cool. And pull out all those details like genre, actors, ratings. Yeah. And then all that powers the recommendation system. That makes a lot of sense. So, okay, I've got my math and Python skills down. Yeah. Now I'm learning to talk to data like a pro. That feels like a really good foundation for starting this AI journey. What's the next step? Now we're getting to the good stuff, the core mm -hmm. concepts of machine learning. Okay, let's dive in. What are the essentials I need to know about machine learning itself? Well, there are three main types of machine learning. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, okay. and reinforcement learning. Okay. So uh, what's the difference between all these different types of learning? So imagine you're teaching a dog new tricks. Okay, I can imagine that. In supervised learning, you're giving the dog really clear instructions and showing it examples. Okay. So like you point to a ball and you say fetch, and the dog learns to associate the word with the action. So in machine learning, this translates to feeding an algorithm what we call labeled data. That's data where you've already provided the answers. So like showing the AI flashcards, both the question and the answer, and it learns to answer new questions on its own based on those examples. Exactly. Now imagine you just let the dog explore the park on its own. It's going to start noticing that uh, you know certain breeds of dogs tend to play together, even though you haven't explicitly told it to group them. Right. So that's kind of like unsupervised learning. The algorithm is given data without any labels, and it has to find these hidden patterns and structures on its own. So that's a little bit more free-spirited. What kind of real-world applications are there for that kind of learning? Think about things like recommending products to customers on an online store. Okay. Unsupervised learning can analyze past purchase data to identify groups of customers with similar buying habits, even if you don't have these, uh, you know, predefined customer categories. Oh, interesting. So supervised learning is like a guided tour. And unsupervised learning is like exploring a new city on your own. Exactly. What about reinforcement learning? What's that all about? So that one is like training your dog with treats and praise. Oh, exactly. So you reward the dog for good behavior, and it learns to repeat those actions to get more rewards. Right. So in AI, the algorithm interacts with an environment, taking actions and receiving feedback in the form of rewards or penalties. Right. And over time, it learns the best strategy to maximize its rewards. It's all about trial and error. Yes. Learning from its mistakes, getting better. So like self-driving cars. Exactly. Self-driving cars are a great example. They use reinforcement learning to navigate those complex environments, making decisions based on the feedback from sensors and the surrounding environment. Okay, so we've got supervised learning, learning from examples. We have unsupervised learning, mm -hmm. uncovering hidden patterns. And we've got reinforcement learning, yes. which is learning through trial and error. Is there anything else within those three categories that I should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. So within those types of learning, there are key concepts like regression, classification, okay. clustering, and decision trees. Wow. Each of these plays a specific role in solving different kinds of problems. So regression helps you predict continuous values, okay. like predicting uh, house prices based on different features. Then you have classification, which is all about categorizing things, like deciding if an email is spam or not spam. Oh, right. Clustering, which we kind of touched upon with unsupervised learning yeah. groups, similar data points together. And then decision trees use this uh, tree-like structure to break down a problem into into a series of decisions. Okay. Wow. This is a lot to take in, but it's starting to make a lot of sense. Oh. Are there any resources that you'd recommend to like dig deeper into all these different concepts? Definitely. So Andrew Nang has a machine learning course on Coursera. It's a classic for a reason. It's a great introduction to the field. I'll check that out. And if you're ready to get your hands dirty with code, there's this book, Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-learn, Keras, and TensorFlow. Okay, I'm writing that down. It's a great resource for both theory and practical application. Awesome. It feels like we've covered so much ground already from like the foundational skills to the core concepts of machine learning. We have. Is there anything else essential before we move on? Yeah, before we dive into deep learning, there's this one more critical concept, the model. A model, like a like a fashion model. No, not that kind of model. Okay. In machine learning, a model is a representation of what an algorithm has learned from the data. Oh, okay. Think of it as a set of instructions that the AI uses to make predictions or decisions. So you train a model on a set of data, and that model captures the patterns and relationships within the data. So if I'm building an AI to predict stock prices, the model is like the brain of the operation. Exactly. It contains all the knowledge it's gained from analyzing past stock data. 
Yes. The model allows the AI to take in new information and make informed predictions. Got it. Understanding how those models work is key to understanding how AI actually thinks. That's a great point. Yeah. So we've laid the groundwork with math, Python, data handling, and now we understand the concept of a model. I'm ready for the next level. All right, let's do it. What's next on this AI learning roadmap? Next, we'll be exploring deep learning. Ooh, deep learning. That's where things get really interesting. It is. I'm excited to learn more. Yeah, welcome back. All right, so we've laid a solid foundation in AI and ML and even dipped our toes into the world of deep learning. Mm -hmm. Which sounds so fascinating, by the way. It is. But is it really as game-changing as everyone says? Oh, it definitely is. What makes it different from regular machine learning? It's like machine learning, but, uh, you know. I'm steroids or something. Yeah, kind of. Right. So, like, while those traditional machine learning algorithms tend to plateau in performance after a certain point, yeah. deep learning models keep getting better the more data you feed them. So the more data, the smarter they get. Yeah. But what is it about deep learning that allows it to handle like massive amounts of data so well? Well, it's not just about the quantity of the data. Okay. It's also about the complexity of the data. Right. Deep learning actually takes inspiration from the structure of the human brain. Oh, wow. Specifically, those interconnected networks of neurons. So we're talking about artificial neurons mimicking how our brains work. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So these artificial neurons are organized into layers, and that forms what we call artificial neural networks. <laughs> and information flows through these layers, allowing yeah. the network to learn these complex patterns and representations. Imagine it's like having a team of specialists, each focusing on a different aspect of a problem, okay. and they're all working together to solve it. Can you give me an example, like a really concrete example of how that works? Yeah, for sure. Let's say you're building an AI that can recognize different breeds of dogs in pictures. Okay, I like that. So you'd feed this neural network like tons and tons of dog pictures, each labeled with the correct breed. And as the network processes these images, the connections between those artificial neurons adjust, okay. strengthening the pathways that lead to accurate breed identification. So it's like developing its own visual encyclopedia of dog breeds. Yeah. That's so cool. Exactly. So it's learning by example, but on a much grander scale than traditional machine learning. Yeah. And because these networks have so many layers, they can learn these incredibly intricate patterns and nuances. Okay. That's why they're so good at things like image recognition, natural language processing, okay. even playing those complex games like Go. That makes sense. So we've got all these artificial neurons forming networks, but are all deep learning networks structured the same way? That's a good question. Mm. So there are actually different types of deep learning networks. Okay. Each of them is specialized for different tasks. Okay. So one of the most common ones is called the feed forward neural network. It's kind of like a one-way street where information flows from input to output. Okay. These are good for more simple tasks like classifying images or predicting values. So for like our dog breed identifier. Yeah. It could take a picture and then tell me whether it's a golden retriever or a poodle. Exactly. But for more complex tasks, okay. like understanding the meaning of a sentence mm. or generating realistic human speech, yeah. we need more specialized networks. That's where convolutional neural networks, CNNs, okay, yeah, CNNs and yeah. recurrent neural networks, RNNs, come in. Okay. Yeah. What makes those two so special? Think about how our eyes work. Okay. We don't process an entire image at once. Right, we right. focus on specific features like edges. Okay textures and shapes. Okay. CNNs do something similar. Okay. So they use filters to extract these features. Oh, that's cool. Which allows them to understand the content of images in a way that's similar to how humans do. They're like AI detectives breaking it down into the important elements. Well, yeah, exactly. That's really cool. Right. And what about RNNs? What kind of problems are they good at solving? So RNNs are the masters of sequence. Yeah. They have this unique ability to remember past information, right. which makes them perfect for dealing with sequential data like text or time series. So imagine you're reading a book. Right. To understand the current sentence, you need to remember the context of the previous sentences. Absolutely. RNNs do the same thing. They maintain an internal memory that allows them to process information in a way that considers the order and context. So unlike feed-forward networks, they have memory. Yes. 
Exactly. Okay. And that makes them super powerful for tasks like language translation, okay. speech recognition, right. and even predicting stock prices, where understanding trends and patterns over time is crucial. This is amazing. Deep learning is really pushing the boundaries of what AI can do. Any resources for those wanting to learn more? Oh, yeah, definitely. So Andrew Meng's deep learning specialization on Coursera is a fantastic resource. Okay. And for a more hands-on approach, the fast.ai courses are known for their practical focus and real-world applications. Got it. So we've covered the basics of deep learning, and we've explored these different types of networks. What's next on our roadmap? Well, now it's time to get our hands dirty and see how we can use this knowledge to build real-world applications. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's build something. Okay, so we've learned about the foundations of AI, dove into machine learning, and even explored the fascinating world of deep learning. Yeah. Now it's time to put all that knowledge to use. Right. Let's talk about building something. Yeah, exactly. This is where it gets really fun. Okay. It's time to put your skills into action and build some projects. Okay. That's the best way to solidify your understanding and uh -huh. gain some practical experience. The roadmap mentions build projects. Yeah. But where do I even start? It seems so open-ended. Well, think about areas that interest you. Okay. What are you passionate about? Mm -hmm. Do you love movies? Build a recommendation system. What? Fascinated by finance. Try predicting stock prices. Nope. Are you passionate about healthcare? You could develop an AI that analyzes medical images. So many possibilities. But for someone just starting out, are there any like beginner-friendly projects that are good for grasping the fundamentals. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a classic project is predicting house prices. It's right. a great way to apply regression techniques and understand how different features influence the price of a house. So like square footage, number of bedrooms, location, things like that. Yeah, exactly. You can find data sets online with all that information. Okay. And then you can use a machine learning algorithm like linear regression okay. to build your predictive model. It's a great way to learn about data pre-processing, feature engineering, and model evaluation. Right. All essential skills. That sounds like a good starting point. Yeah. What if I wanted to build something more interactive, like something that can communicate with people? Building a chatbot is a great project for exploring natural language processing, NLP. You can use tools like TensorFlow or PyTorch to create a chatbot that can understand user input and generate responses. So like a chat bot that answers questions about a specific topic. Yeah, like a virtual assistant. Right. Or you could build one that tells jokes, writes poems, or even helps you with your daily tasks. Wow, the possibilities. What about computer vision? Yeah. Like AI that can see and understand images. Building an image classifier is a great way to dive into that. Okay. You can train a convolutional neural network. Remember those? CNNs. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. To recognize different objects and images. Okay. You could build an app that classifies different breeds of dogs. Yeah. Identifies types of flowers or even detects objects in real time using your webcam. So cool. Any other tips for tackling these projects? Yeah, don't be afraid to experiment, make mistakes, and learn from them. Okay. It's all part of the process. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. That's good to hear. Sometimes it feels like everyone in AI is like a coding prodigy. There are tons of online resources and communities okay. to support you. Collaborating on open source projects on platforms like GitHub is a fantastic way to learn okay. from more experienced developers. Right. You can also find amazing communities on Reddit, LinkedIn, and Kaggle where people share their projects, ask questions, and learn from each other. That's really helpful advice. I'm feeling more confident about getting started now. Mm -hmm. Any final words of wisdom? Remember that AI and ML are constantly evolving. Okay. So continuous learning is key. Right. Follow thought leaders and researchers like Jan LeCun, okay. Andrew Eng, and Fei Fei Lai to stay up to date on advancements. Awesome. But most importantly, have fun. Building AI is incredibly rewarding. It definitely sounds like it. Thanks for guiding us through this roadmap. Where's it's been a really insightful deep dive into the world of AI and ML. And for our listeners out there, remember, you don't need to be a math whiz or a coding genius to get started. Yeah. Just take it one step at a time, embrace the learning process, mm -hmm. and let your curiosity lead the way. Who knows? You might create the next big thing in AI. Thanks for listening, everyone.